Theme parks never stand still. That's why we are now going into a news recap for the week 9, 2022. Gerstlauer advertises new roller coaster model. On its own homepage, Gerstlauer meanwhile advertises a new roller coaster model. It is a family suspended coaster, apparently strongly inspired by the better known Vekoma rides. The page is already online since mid February. In addition, it completely passed me by that the German manufacturer has already put such a ride into operation last year in Yumiyuri Land, Japan. In addition to a layout example, Gerstlauer particularly highlights the state-of-the-art technology and operation, as well as the possibility of onboard sound systems. Similar to the newer Wacoma installations, the cars rely on convenient lap bars to secure passengers. I am curious when we will get to see such a system in Europe. Even though Japan is high on my to-do list, it will probably be a few years before I am there. A hamster wheel at Restyland. In Restyland, a roller coaster for children called Stronado is being built by SPF Visa this year. According to the company's own homepage, the interesting thing is that one of the cars of the regular spinning coaster will be equipped with the so called hamster wheel. Thus, the children's roller coaster also offers some head over heels action for teenagers and adults. Tomorrow land at Holiday Park. Now we are looking a little further into the future, because the press release which officially comes from Plopsa is about a big novelty at Holiday Park for the 2024 season. According to it, the area of the park's water ski show will become a Tomorrowland themed area in the future. Presumably similar to what was recently created at the group's Belgian flagship park. Again, the thematic design will be developed in close collaboration with Tomorrowland Festival creatives. A Plopsa's announcement here regularly references the completed project in Japan, but I would refrain from expecting another Muckrides extreme spinning coaster here for now. Even though the investment sum of 15 million euros sounds quite high, there are still many options for rides open here. Especially the fact that the holiday park rather lacks in a bigger family suitable roller coaster instead of another thrill machine makes me rather believe in other alternatives. The portfolio in Belgium had no such gap, and also a large, well designed, family friendly attraction could be really good here at, at Holiday Park. We'll keep an eye on the whole thing because the construction work is supposed to start already this year, so the thing will be probably big in any case. Tilt Coaster at Energylandia. Thanks to the European funding program and the associated obligatory tenders and announcements, we now know for sure Energylandia will be getting a tilt coaster in the near future. The prototype superstructures on Becoma's factory premises match this. And therefore, we can assume that this is a new generation of the type from the Dutch manufacturer. Very interesting are also the requirements for the roller coaster translated by the RCDB, which were taken directly from the tenders. According to this, the roller coaster will most probably contain the following elements and ride figures. A twisted vertical drop, reversing camelback, upward zero G roll, triple down, twisted camelback, upward helix, camelback, barrel roll, high sider, flat carousel turn, twisted bunny hop and a normal bunny hop. The International Roller Coaster Database states a scheduled opening in 2023, but as far as I know, there is no official confirmation yet. Wallaby Belgium without main attractions? A post shared via Theme Park Magic's Facebook presence says there could be problems with some main attractions, especially Conda, at the season's opening. Local authorities had received complaints about noise pollution, especially from the Mega Coaster, which opened in 2021. Apparently, they only want the park to open under 2018 permits, which date back to 2015. This would force the park to keep new main attractions like Conda, but also the family coaster Tiki Waka closed. This is 
is unlikely to be, to be an acceptable operation for the park. Efforts are now being made to reach a sensible agreement by the start of the season. Further rumors from rather unreliable sources even talk about the fact that the park would have been deprived of the building rights for all attractions since 2015. This would mean that Pulsar, Fun Pilot and Popcorn Revenge would also have to remain closed. And the rumor is based on alleged complaints filed by residents which would not have been delivered due to at the time striking postal services. Uh, but I would like to explicitly point out there that this is rather unlikely and would be an almost impossible failure at a regulatory level. One would have let in the case of for six years building sites and openings of attractions simply despite complaints run, which I consider almost impossible. I'll stay tuned to the topic and report again on the subject if there are new findings. Europa Park suspends Nord Stream 2 sponsorship due to Ukraine war. Unfortunately, only through external press reports, like, the, like here the article of Heidelberg 24, it became known that the Europa Park suspends with immediate effect the Nord Stream 2 sponsoring at the Blue Fire roller coaster. And the reason for this is obviously the war in Ukraine. Normally, I don't comment or deal with political topics on this channel. Here, however, we have a direct connection, especially to Europa Park. And the choice of words is particularly striking. You suspend sponsorship you don't end it consistently. Therefore, with regards to this message, a few sentences from me and my very own personal opinion. I think it's right what Europa Park is, do, is doing here. However, I must also say that I am very critical of sponsorships, especially the extensive ones that have been taken place at Europa Park for a long time. The Gazprom or in the meantime Nord Stream 2 case now shows us quite clearly what problems such deals can bring. This is not the only very present sponsoring of attractions in Europa Park. In my personal opinion, they should think about whether this is really a good idea for a park that adorns itself with awards such as best theme park in the world and also advertises very clearly with these. We are talking about one of the big players in Europe with around 5 million visitors in a non-pandemic year. Is it really necessary to maneuver oneself into difficult pol political situations through sponsorships of this kind? The matter has always bothered me at Europa Park and nobody can guarantee that this was the last case. But I don't want to say more about this at this point. This is not a politics channel. That was the news recap for the week 9, 2022. If there's enough news, I'll bring you a new recap next Sunday. If you want to stay up to date, leave me a like, a sub or a comment. You can also follow me live in the parks on Facebook and Instagram and never miss a video there. For contact and discussions, feel free to drop by in the Discord.